So my timing is synced. Uh, I do apologize, I don't have a video of the process. Uh, my friend came over and was helping me and he was kind of in a rush. I don't own a timing light. Uh, he has one and that's probably why I don't own one because it seems like anytime I need it, uh, he's always willing to, to lend a hand. Um, but I am gonna explain the, the process and, and what we did. Uh, so what is syncing the timing? Uh, we want to make sure that when AAM is calling for, let's say, 10 degrees of timing, that that's exactly what your engine is, is running. We don't want it to be running um, more or less, and it, it just syncs things up. So it does involve a timing light. That's what he has, and a timing light's got to have a few wires coming off it. One of them's got to be ground, one of them's got to be power, and the other is going to be an inductive pickup. And that pickup is meant to attach to a spark plug wire. And what it'll do is any time that spark plug fires, it'll pick up that signal and it'll cause the light on it to flash. And it's kind of like a strobe light effect because uh, the, the spark signals are, are happening quite often when an engine is, is running. Um, and you may ask yourself, well, there's no spark plug wires on a Supra. Uh, yep, we figured that out. <laughs> there are coil packs and we tried holding the, the signal up against, or the sensor up against the coil pack and it wasn't working. Some people say they can clip it on the wire just fine. Uh, we didn't try that, I guess. Uh, what I did is I took an old spark plug wire and cut the end off it and jammed it up into an old super coil. I had just replaced them, so this works out well. And by putting this in, we're able to clamp that inductive signal look up right on this wire and it picked it up like it should. Uh, the next thing that you need to figure out is where is the mark on the crank pulley that you want to look for when you're running the timing light. So that'll, that'll strobe, but we want to we look down here. I don't know if you can see on the plastic cover, it says zero degrees, there's a tick for five degrees, then there's a 10 degrees. Uh, what we want to do is we're going to go in AAM and we're going to say, hey, sync this timing at 10 degrees, lock it, lock it at 10 degrees. So what AAM will do, if we go in here, and we go to wizards, ignition timing sync, if we set this to 10 degrees and we say lock ignition timing, when the Supra is running and it's idling, it's gonna be calling for 10 degrees. And that timing light hooked up is gonna flash every time uh, the cylinder number one fires, and we should see down here that timing mark reflect at 10 degrees. If it's a little more or a little less, we can adjust it in AAM. We can say, go back a little bit or go forward a bit, and we wanna do that until it matches. Uh, the problem is we expected there to be like one little mark on the crank pulley, and that's typically how a lot of cars are. Um, probably the factory crank pulley was like that. This is a fluid amper for my 3000 GT, and you can see that it only has one mark. Um, God only knows why the fluid damper for the Supra has like 20 or 30 marks on it. Um, and I think I have, I have a picture, it's able to crawl under there. You can see all of the marks that are on this crank pulley. And I took a Sharpie and I covered over every one that wasn't important. And this is the actual mark. It's the first big one. Um, it's, it's the first big one coming from uh, that direction. So it'd be the, the, last, the last one in the chain. And I Sharpied the rest out. And if you're not sure what mark is there, you can kind of see it down there as well. If you're not sure which one is accurate, you can easily test using uh, some kind of extension down the spark plug hole. And that's exactly what we did. So there's two extensions. Is We took the spark plug out, we put the extension down there so it was actually resting on the piston, sticking up with the spark plug hole. I put a socket and ratchet um, on the crank pulley bolt and I cranked it over by hand and we watched that extension as it rose up and then started to go down. And when it's at its highest point for that cylinder number one, so it's the one closest to me, that's TDC. So we got it to where it was at its highest point, and then I looked at the 
I looked at the crank pulley and I, I looked at what was next to that zero mark and it was that, that uh, line that, that I highlighted in this picture. I also looked online afterwards and some other people confirmed it, so that's always reassuring. Uh, but what you'll do, once you know that, I blacked out the other lines, the timing light will strobe, you've got it locked on 10 degrees, you wanna see that single line appear at 10 degrees every time the timing light shines. And if it's a little before or a little less, you compensate for it by going forward or backwards. If I click show advanced options, you can see what my end, mine ended up being. It was 5.539 and that was the, the settings. So when you make this smaller or larger, it's gonna change this number. Um, so where I got it, where it was perfect, there was 5.539. And this other number, this pickup uh, comp delay, uh, I will circle back to that. I just got the car to where you can actually start and let it idle. That pickup comp delay is when the timing varies between low RPM and high RPM. So my timing synced fine, perfectly at 10 degrees here. We also tested at five degrees, Every, everything's fine. Uh, that's at idle speed. But if I have revved the engine to five or 6,000 RPMs and I had it synced on 10 degrees, and I look down there, it may not be on 10 degrees. It, it may vary a little bit because we're at a higher RPM. And that's what that delay value does. And that's the, that, that's the next thing I need to adjust. I'm just not ready for it at this point um, because the car basically starts and, and idles. It's not ready to, to rev up to 6,000, 7,000 RPM. Uh, but I will circle back to that and maybe then I'll, I'll get a video of the, the timing light process. So the timing is, has been synced and I've got that saved in my map and I saved it. You can actually see that if you were to go back into the wizard and click show advanced options. It's 5.539 teeth. Uh, that's what it had to be set to so that when the ECU says fire at uh, 10 degrees, um, the actual car is firing at, at 10 degrees. Um, so that's saved. I backed up my calibration file as well. Um, I called it after timing sync and I threw that into my old calibrations folder and now I'm working in the same map that I've that I've always been working in the Charlie Supra and the next thing that I want to deal with is idle uh, but before I can do idle I just want to kind of straighten out my ignition table a little bit look at my trims and build my O2 feedback table uh, and the settings that that we did earlier were just to get the car started and we only really cared about this low area of the map um, but if you look at kind of what we did it's a little hard to see right there let me go to the actual ignition table uh, you, you can see it's a pretty right angle and it's not going to transition while going over um, that we don't want any kind of sudden spikes like that really in any of our maps uh, so i'm going to come back here and I'm going to clean this up um, to make that transition a little bit better. You, you can clean it up on the ignition tab. We also could have cleaned it up on the tuning tab, um, but it's a little bit easier to work on the, the specific tab. It just gives you a, a bigger map. Um, so I'm going to set these back to 22.4. And if you just hit the S key um, and you have them highlighted, you can pop this up without having to right click. And I'm going to do the same for this column at 28.4 and that's what they had and it, it is a pretty good transition and this is the map that they deliver um, it's always a good idea to kind of compare it to the stock um, map if you can find one published uh, for the 3000 gt i think i was able to find a stock ignition map i, I wasn't able to find one for the supra um, i actually found a few threads where uh, people said download AEM and, and get the calibration file and check that. So they're they're using this as kind of a source of truth. Um, but we will be making adjustments to this later on. Uh, but for now, just to, to play it safe, we've got we've got it smoothed out and it looks good. And I'm just gonna decrease the timing a little bit for the entire map. And I'm gonna save that. And that just lowers it, so we'll be a little bit safer when it when it comes down to it. Um, and, and right now when we were dealing with idle, we're only 
it's still kind of messing in, in this area. Uh, the next thing I want to look at um, is the, the trims. We'll just hop over there real quick. And these are all the trims that can adjust with fuel. And we've already done the battery offset. We took care of that. There are a few other ones um, that we're not going to use, like gear fuel trim, user fuel trim, barrel. Um, air temp, sometimes people will use this a little bit. And then we've got warm up enrichment. Uh, we're not going to touch warm up enrichment right now because we're going to basically be dealing with the car when it's idling um, after it's after it's warmed up. Uh, but if you ever do start the car and, and you see that while well, it's running a little bit rich, this is the area that you would adjust. And we'll probably cover that when we get to the to the starting portion. Um, but specifically, this is the one that I that I want to focus on. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. This is boost fuel trim. And I know we haven't touched um, boost yet. We're, we're running on wastegate pressure. Uh, but what this does is it'll compensate for fuel based on um, how much pressure is in the system. And we want this to be kind of linear. And we want it to be linear. That way, if the boost that we're running changes, if, if you go from 15 to 17 PSI, um, we're going to follow this linear trend of how much fuel to add. Um, so if you have one pound of pressure in the system or 14.7 or PSI, we're going to be giving it X amount of fuel. And if you double that pressure, you double the air in that system, we're going to want to double the amount of fuel that, that we're giving it. And this map doesn't form a nice straight straight line. And, and what we want to do is, is we want to do exactly that where we, if we're doubling the, the boost, we want to double the fuel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate what I need at 35.2, because that's the end of the map. Um, if you go back to geometry or hi high school math, um, you can you can do that. So one bar is 14.7 is PSI. If you double that, it's 29.4 PSI. There's no 29.4 PSI on here. You can't you can't select this in in the middle and, and bring it up. You could bring them both up and kind of eyeball it, but we're just going to do some quick calculations to find that. So if we know that 29.4 is what we want for 200% um, fuel, we can solve for x, and that's going to give us this value. So 239.45. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to highlight this last dot, and I'm going to click S, 239.45. And that bumps it way up there. Uh, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing for down here at negative 13.1. I want it to cross this zero mark uh, right right here. And then I want it for 14.7 to be at 100. And then for 29.4 to be at 200. So we're just going to go the, the opposite way here. And we can use that same kind of equation. So 29.4x equals this. And if you solve for it, we're going to want 89.11 or negative 89.11 at this um, end mark. So let's set this negative 89.11. And if we highlight this entire map, you can right click it and you can go to interpolate horizontally or you could also click H and that's going to connect the dots. And you can see it's bringing us right across this zero barrier at 14.7 where 100% fuel, we double the air going into the system, um, and have twice as twice as much boost, or around 29.4, you can see this is at 200%. And this has got to keep our, our fuel tables pretty much in, in the ballpark um, when we start running more more boost, um, or less boost. If you, if you have some variances, this will kind of keep the fuel in check. And the reason I'm doing this now is if we're going to be changing the fuel table quite a bit and getting it to idle and, and rev. And we only want to do that once. We don't want to have to come back in here and and uh, t tweak the tables again if we change this later on. So I'm going to save this. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the O2 feedback. And this is a, a target table. And this is what we want the air fuel ratio to be given a, a certain load and uh, RPM. And this is what they deliver. 
and all we cared about last time was starting the car. So I've got this area set to 14.7. But we want to do a little bit uh, more work to it. We want it to transition to under full, loo uh, full load and have a safe air fuel ratio. And AAM will deliver kind of th this little graph where they'll show you the different areas of the map. And you can ignore this load over here. This is for a non-turbo car, but you've got your idle area, your cruising area. If you were to slam on the, the pedal under low RPM, the car's not really going to want to go anywhere. They call that the lugging area. That's up here in the map. Um, your wide open throttle, getting to wide open throttle, and then decel when you're you're kind of cruising and you let off the, the gas pedal and let the engine slow you down. So they describe the areas of the map and they deliver um, a map right here. Uh, under high RPM, they're, they're targeting 11 air fuel, which is fine. Technically, the leaner you go, the more power you'll get. Um, but it's really not the safest trade-off. Maybe if you're spraying meth, you could run a little bit leaner, or if you're running flex fuel a little bit leaner. Um, I'm going to be targeting uh, 10 point, uh, nine up here for an air fuel ratio. I don't think the the extra three to five horsepower is worth the, the safety trade-off. Um, and I'm going to be adjusting this table. And if, if you look um, at the actual graph, you can see it's a little bit choppy what they deliver. You don't want to have these kind of sharp angles in any direction. Uh, and I'm going to spend some time cleaning this up. And it's, it's not going to be something I, I video because it'll take a while. Uh, but what you can do is you can adjust your, your view. I'm going to bring these down. I like how the the ignition table did it, where they had the graph on the, the top and the chart on the bottom. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to make the window a little bit bigger. And this is what um, I'm going to play with, so I can kind of see the changes. And you can adjust them here, or you can click here, and you can watch the map when you when you move it around. And you can see that it, that it corrects. And you could highlight this entire row right here. And you can press the minus key to kind of balance it out. Um, and, and that's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to decide what air fuel ratio you want for certain regions. And you're going to uh, move around the map and get rid of the sharp edges. And I've already done that. I'm not going to save this calibration because I've already done that. I have a file right here. Don't want to save the existing one. And this is what what I came up with. And you can see there's not any sharp spikes. Everything kind of curves a little bit. Maybe right here you can see a little bit of a, a dip, right? So if I tried to find that area of the map, and I'm just using the arrow keys, I could increase that a little bit, and it gets rid of that dip. So it's a nice kind of smooth uh, transition and maybe maybe right here is a little bit um, too sharp so I could change that if I wanted but I think this is pretty good and, and you're gonna want to spend a lot of time tweaking this because this is the air fuel target that you're gonna want to achieve if you decide you need to make changes later on you're gonna have to adjust this table and you're gonna have to adjust another table so it's it's worth trying to get this right the first time but um, if it's not perfect, it's not the end of the world. You'll you'll be really good at it when it when it comes time to to going back and making any corrections. So I'm going to save this. And the next thing that we'll get into is idle, and we'll start that shortly. All right, moving on to idling. Um, so before I explain the the idle tab and how to dial in idle on my Supra, uh, I need to talk about how it actually works because before we start changing stuff you really need to know what's going on under the hood um, and on a supra the idle is controlled by an idle air control motor um, pretty much any car nowadays is going to be controlled by one um, and what an idle air control motor does is it allows a little bit of air to kind of go around the throttle plate um, and that air can be varied you can allow more air or less air um, using a little plunger, and that plunger is controlled by an idle air control motor. And typically, there's going to be two kinds that, that we deal with. There's pulse width um, or there's stepper motor. And the Supra uses a stepper motor. Um, this image is showing a pulse width one. 
Um, and this is just taken right out of the AEM version for uh, PDF manual that can be found in the installation um, directory. And, and I've referred to a few pictures in here. And, and yes, it's EMS4, um, and, and we're dealing with version 2. But some of the pictures and, and some of the stuff in here um, still applies. Uh, so the Supra has a stepper motor. And if, if you're unsure what your car has, um, there, there's obviously Google. Uh, but you can also usually tell just by looking at it. A pulse width one has got to have one or two wires going to it, um, and a stepper motor one has got to have probably four, five, or six, um, just because more wires are needed to control the steps. Typically, there's like four magnet coils around the stepper motor, um, and the system works kind of by activating them to get that motor to spin. And when that motor spins, uh, there's teeth on a rod and that will shoot out or it'll pull in and that has a little coned end or, or a flat end that that basically allows more air or less air to go around the, the throttle plate. And that's how we control idle nowadays. In the past, um, before idle air control motors, typically there's a set screw um, on the throttle body and you'd, you'd kind of tilt the plate a little bit um, and the air that escapes around the side would control your idle. Uh, that worked, but if you drove your car and, and you had temperature variations or, or went up a, a steep hill, um, it may not idle at the same rate at the top as it did at the bottom. And, and that's kind of why IAC motors were created uh, many years ago. It's, it's nothing new. Um, and we're going to deal with how AEM controls these motors. And, and probably the other way, if you're unsure about the motor, is, is you can just check the, the documentation. Um, so this is what AEM delivers for my Supra, and it says idle motor type is stepper. And just because my Supra came with a stepper motor doesn't mean I have to use one forever. Some people do swap them out. There are conversion kits out there. Why would you want to go from a stepper to an I, uh, a pulse width one? Um, probably the biggest reason uh, is, is kind of simplicity, but it can also free up a lot of output wires. It takes uh, four to six wires to control the stepper motor. Um, and if you had a pulse width one, you could have one or two wires um, controlling it, and you could free up uh, several outputs that could be used for other stuff. So I'm in AEM tuner right now, and I'm on the idle screen. Uh, and, and you know my Super has a stepper motor. And you probably don't see anything on here that, that looks like the number of steps or how many steps is it in? What are the maximum steps that it can open? Uh, and AEM doesn't really show any of that information on the main idle tab. If, if you think you have IAC problems and you want to kind of monitor um, what the steps are, you can actually add a channel for it or an options. Uh, if you right click options, tree, idle, and then advanced idle, so down here, we have options idle in the bottom left, and that's what's showing. Uh, but under advanced, you can add one for pulse width, or you can add one for stepper. So let's just add that just to show you what it what it'll give us. Um, so it gives us all these things that we really don't need to see. But if, if you're trying to troubleshoot something, um, it, can be, it can be helpful. Uh, so the max steps is 150. Um, it says right here that it's using idle step one, two, three, four. These are just the, the wires. If you looked at the wiring pin output for AEM, you'll see there's uh, four idle step wires that control the motor. Um, so that means it uses four wires to control the steps. Uh, AEM looks like it can control um, stepper motors that, that need eight wires to control them. Um, and then you've got kind of your your, your park rate. So when you shut off the car, your IAC motor um, that may be part way out because it's controlling your idle is going to retract. And that's what it will park at is right here. So I'm going to close this because it's not really needed uh, for what we're going to do. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to build our target base, which is more or less already done. We want it to idle around 1100 RPM and a little bit uh, higher when it's warming up. And then we're going to use this table to control that idle. And what this is, is it's a percentage 
uh, of what we want. So when we start the car, we're going to set this idle and then we're going to go over here and we're going to increase or de decrease this until the car is idling um, where we want. And this, this percentage, um, so if you're used to thinking about this as kind of steps, uh, we saw that the, the maximum number of steps was uh, 150. So if, if you had this at 50%, you could think of it as being 75 steps um, in, into the stepper motor. So 75 steps have then initiated the valves halfway open. Uh, let's go over this stuff. Um, I'll touch base on it when we're actually doing it, but this is just where the car is going to see its idle range. So between 400 and 1800, and the 400 picks right up um, when we exit uh, the, the starting mode. Here's the actual throttle body percentage. So if we're less than 3.1% open, uh, we're going to be in idle mode. If we go above 3.1%, we're going out of idle mode. This high idle above and this high idle RPM offset, this, this is a speed. So if we're driving down the road and we put it into neutral and the car is going to idle while we're coasting, maybe we're trying to see her better friend that we can coast to the next stop sign. That car has got to idle and we're going to keep the RPM a little bit higher because the car is moving. We don't want to risk it um, stalling at, at a higher rate of speed. So above 10 miles an hour, we're going to bump the RPM up 250 uh, revs per minute. The high idle wait time is after that that speed once it's no longer met. So if, if we're if we're coasting, we're at 12 miles an hour, 11 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour, nine miles an hour. Once we see that, hey, we're not above that 10 mile miles per hour threshold, this is how long it's gonna keep doing the high idle. The AC load comp, this is if you turn the, the AC on, uh, how much do you wanna bump the idle? It's set to 6.3%. Obviously, once we get the idle dialed in, um, you can test this by turning your AC on. And if it acts like it wants to stall the car, you'll want to increase this value. Uh, the delay is is probably fine where it is, uh, but the ECU drives when to engage the magnetic clutch on the end of the AC compressor. And when you press the AC button in your car, it's got a signal to the ECU to turn on that clutch. What this 0.38 tells it is give it a little bit of delay. We know that the, the user just turned the AC on. We're going to give it this amount of delay for us to bump, to bump the idle before that clutch engages on the compressor. Um, so that, that can be useful. Uh, the minimum RPM, this just um, ties into the actual AC button. The minimum RPM. Uh, that's that's the minimum RPM that you do not want to turn the AC compressor on. So if, if you're at 600 RPMs because the car is stalling and the AC was on, turn that AC off uh, because we don't need that load on the system. Let me just scroll down a little bit. So the idle power steering load. Some cars on the power steering pump, they're going to have a little sensor with a, a wire going to it, and that's a pressure switch, and it'll detect when the steering wheel is being turned. And what that can do is it can signal to the ECU to bump um, the idle a little bit, uh, just to keep the car from from wanting to stall. On the Supra, they don't have that style uh, pressure switch. There is a pressure switch, um, but instead of signaling a wire to the ECU, there's actually two vacuum lines going to it. And I think it kind of works just like an IAC motor where it bleeds a little bit of air around the throttle plate. And that's that's how they bump the idle. Um, and I've got that bypassed on my car. Uh, and it, I don't have any drivability problems. I've, I've had it bypassed uh, for a while. Um, if you do bypass yours and it does want to stall a little bit when you when you turn the wheel or the RPMs dip way down, uh, just 
just increase uh, your idle target. So if it's at if it's at a thousand and it does that, increase it to ten fifty or or eleven hundred. Um, so this stuff is not applicable to me because of of the supra. So I'm just gonna remove it. I don't need to see this at all. It's set to always off. And and I like to do that with any page that I'm on. If there's stuff that I don't need, I'll remove it from the workspace. That way I don't see it. Um, the dead band, there's a dead band plus and a dead band um, minus. This is kind of the, the threshold of when do we make adjustments. Um, so if it's idling at 1100 uh, RPMs and that's what your target is, and you've got this dead band set to 75, uh, the the ECU isn't going to make any kind of adjustment to, to change your idle because you're on that idle. Um, but if your RPM starts to creep and say it is, is revving 50 RPMs uh, more, it's not going to try to make any adjustments. But as soon as you cross the 75 RPM barrier, uh, it's going to try to make adjustments. And what we're going to do when we're adjusting idle is we're actually going to set these to a high value and, an, and a high negative value, 3000 minus 3000, to basically tell the idle air control motor, hey, don't make any any adjustments. Um, we're trying to dial in the idle ourselves. The feedback rate, this is how often the ECU checks to say, hey, do I need to make adjustments? Um, and we may have to vary this. Uh, we're going to leave it as is for right now at, at 201. Uh, I think that's milliseconds. Yeah, 201 milliseconds. If we get into idle hunting, meaning that the idle is kind of going up and down, up and down, uh, we may increase this uh, just so it, it doesn't try to overcorrect itself back and forth. Uh, the feedback min and the feedback max, when the idle air control motor tries to correct the idle, uh, how far forward or how far backward, how, how far out can it extend that little plunger, how far in can it extend the plunger to, to try to, to control the idle. Um, and then this last one, uh, I'm not sure why AAM puts it here. This is for pulse width type IICs, uh, so I don't need to see that. And just like the power steering stuff, I'm going to remove it. So let me save this workspace. And when the car warms up, I'll, I'll start explaining uh, these tables for you. All right, I got my car warmed up. The air fuel ratio uh, is safe. The O2 feedback is, is correcting for it. Um, so that boost trim that we did earlier uh, is probably the reason for that. Um, so I can clean it up a little bit. I can see that it's, it's taking away fuel. So these, these tables are probably a little, our values are a little bit high. Um, so let's just compensate for that. You can see the feedback value going down a little bit. So it's right over here. It's negative uh, 3.7 now. It was around 7 or 8. And I had to press minus probably three times on those. And if those values are off, then the rest of the table is probably skewed the same. So I'm just going to subtract that uh, from everything else just to keep everything in the ballpark. All right. So I saved that. Uh, now I want to deal with idle. And right off the, the bat, uh, I, I already started doing the video and, and had to stop because it wasn't working like I thought. Um, and I can see right here this error TPS is on. And it says, turns on if the sensor is outside the normal operating range. And you can see right here that the throttle is showing 0%. Um, and if I shut the car off, it's going to show 2.2%. So I'm pretty sure it's the vacuum of the car that's causing that throttle to close a little bit more when it's running. Um, and that throws this error TPS. And you can see right here, if, if this is true, then the idle control has stopped. Um, so earlier, I was trying to mess with the idle, and it wasn't working as I expected. I had to stop the video um, and, and start over. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the set throttle range wizard and I'm just going to set my min volts now.
and you can see that turned the error TPS off. It's showing my throttle is 2% with the car running. Um, I'd rather have it working with the car running than with it off, obviously. Uh, so that's where I'm going to keep it. Um, so my idle value of below 3.1% for for the idle feedback is, is fine. Um, so now we're going to to adjust the idle. Uh, and the first thing we want to do is turn off anything that that could be interfering with it or making adjustments um, to keep it in range. Uh, so we're going to start with ignition. It can advance or retard the timing. It can advance it to speed it up, the RPMs up, or it can retard it to slow it down to try to get it in our target range. And our target range is 1100 because um, the car is warmed up to temp. So I'm going to select everything here. I'm going to click S and I'm going to set it to zero. So ignition timing is no longer doing anything for idle. This RPM offset versus load, uh, I think this is the most misunderstood table in AAM. I'm going to set this to zero right now and come back uh, to this and we're going to adjust it and I'll explain it later. Um, and then the last thing we want to do is this feedback. And this was if the RPM was 75 more revs than it should be, it could enable uh, feedback with the idle air control motor. This is if it was below um, 25 revs, it could uh, enable feedback. And we're just going to set these high and, and, and low so that it'll never um, do feedback. And, and watch what happens here. I'm trying to type in negative 3,000 and it just keeps going down. Um, if it's a negative number and you highlight it and you try to type it in, it, it doesn't work. You got to clear it first and then type in uh, the value. Just be cautious of that because I've actually set stuff that should be a negative number to a positive number just, just because of that little glitch. Uh, so now nothing should be uh, messing with idle um, from these tables at least. I can see my fuel is still good. Uh, I want to um, keep, I, I want to turn off that, that feedback, uh, just because there, there is, a, there are a few things that could technically fluctuate it, um, from that table. So I've got feedback control off, and you can see I'm a little bit, uh, rich. Um, not real bad though, but it's definitely in the safe range. I'm just going to take off one, take off two. So I'm in, I'm in the ballpark for fuel. Uh, so now we can start with the idle. And I'm up to operating temperature. And right here is my idle at operating temperature. And it's set to 1100. And I can see over here that that's my target, 1100. And I can see that the engine speed is actually above that. It's like 1170, 1180. It doesn't say constant. It's, it's, it's more or less a range. So what I can do here for this one uh, 1100 spot is I can increase or decrease this to try to achieve my idle. So I'm decreasing it right now and you can see the RPMs are dropping. And it's kind of going from 1089 to 11, 1120 maybe. So that you, you kind of want to split split the difference. Um, so that's good for that point. And then what you can do is you can come over here and you can increase this to 1200. Every time you do this, you want to peek at your air fuel just to make sure that that's still safe. And then you can adjust the point at, at 1200. And you can see it's going from like 1227 to 1180. So this one, this one may be uh, pretty good. So let's try to go for a bigger jump. Um, my max idle is set to 1800 RPMs. So let's see if we can get up there. And it's very important as you increase this to look at the air fuel. Um, so I'm still still safe. Let's try a little bit more. I'm at 1400 RPMs. I'm a little rich, but that's fine. Let's try 1500. 1600. So I'm starting to get a little bit rich, but let's see if I can get away with it. Yeah, that's probably. Let's 
let's, let's go right at 1700 RPM. Um, so I'm at 13.5 air fuel. Let's uh, let's just take a little bit away here to get my air fuel back in the 14s. Um, so back to the idle tab. We're going to set this point. You can see I want to hit 1700 RPMs, but I'm at 1350. So I'm going to increase this. Still want to keep an eye on your air fuel. So it's, it's got to be putting me in a different area of the map right now. You can see I'm at 13.3. So I'm going to go over here. And I'm right here. Take a little bit away from these cells. Back in the 14s. So I'm trying to get this up to 1700 RPM. 13.2, so I am dipping, but I'm, I'm right there. Uh, so that's where it wants to be. And what I'm going to do is highlight those two points I did and press H. So it does this. Anything above it, I'm going to set to what this last value was, which is 30.9. And then I'm going to turn my idle back down since it's kind of high. I don't want my neighbors complaining. So much quieter. So I'm at 1100 now. It's right here, and it's it's still in that range. Uh, and I'm gonna set everything to the left of it to this value. So this is 19.5. Whoops, I did 19.4. Set it back. So that's so that's my idle. Um, you can. Go back and double check your work. I'm at 1200 right now. So this is 1200. So even though you interpolated it, it's, it's still not perfect. You may have to, to come back and, and uh, increase a few things at a time. The interpolation will, will get you ballpark though. So let's, uh, let's just do a little bit higher You see it going below and above, uh, just split the difference, and 1,500. Sixteen hundred, so a little bit high there, and then we're going to take this seventeen hundred looks a little bit high. Let's bring it back down. Let's go back to the seventeen hundred. It was probably one more than it should have been. So 32.4, set 32.4. And we're at 1100 now, and that's ballpark of where we are. This is this area right here, this this cell, this one, and this one are, are probably the most common ones that, that you really want to get right. This stuff up here is, is never really going to idle. Uh, that high um, unless you're starting at, at negative four degrees. Um, so we've we've adjusted our idle percentage and this is a, a percentage of the the steps remember because this is a stepper motor. Um, so about uh, right now we're about 23% of the, the steps. So 20 
3.4% of the max number of steps, which was 150, uh, is is where we'd, we'd be if, if there is a step counter here. Um, so we've done that. Let's go back and let's turn this idle air control feedback back on. I'm going to do 75. I'm going to backspace this, negative 75. And then for the ignition timing, uh, I'm going to do 5 degrees and negative 5 degrees. Oops. Negative 5 degrees set. Then I'm going to interpolate in between. I'm going to save this map. So that's my idle, and you can see it's it's making adjustments to go to go back and forth. Um, and this feedback value is how often it checks for adjustments. So let's set that to 300, and I'm just going to blip the throttle a little bit. And you can see it kind of went forward, back, and, and, and settled down. If I made this a small value, see it, it, it takes a lot longer to settle down because it's, it's trying to correct itself while it's trying to correct itself. And that's what causes it to bounce back. Let's try 400. So that corrected itself. Uh, fairly fast and it didn't overcorrect itself. Um, so I've explained these top two tables. This one, uh, which kind of relates to um, this this feedback rate, and this is how much uh, timing it can advance or retard to, to try to achieve your target RPM. If you had really big cams, you may want to make this dead van value like 100 or 125 minus 125. Uh, this RPM offset versus start is going to bump the RPM uh, up to, I think it's around seven, eight seconds uh, when you initially start the car. So if you, you start the car for the first time, it's it's got to run a little bit faster for seven seconds. So you can control that. Um, and then let's talk about this one right here, which I said is kind of misunderstood. Um, a lot of people will zero it out and that's, that's uh, what they'll say to do. Some people will say, well, just make sure it's it's flat above um, your idle exit point. So I'm at 3.1. So just make sure it's uh, flat to four and then you can ramp it up. Um, but what this is, is uh, my my throttle right now is 2.2%. Let's call it 2%. Um, I'm in idle mode up to 3%. So if I hit the throttle and I go between two and 3%, I'm not out of idle mode, but my RPMs are going to increase. And when my RPMs start to increase, I'm going to be above my target value. And AEM is going to try to reduce those RPMs to hit my target value. So what this table is for is for increasing your RPM slightly above your normal uh, idling per, uh, th throttle body percentage to when you exit idle. So for me, it's really just 1%. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to increase this uh, about 100 RPMs and put this in between. And I'm just going to hit the throttle. So it sounds fine. And I'm going to leave it just like that. And now I saved it. And if you look over here at the air fuel, so I'm, I'm still safe. If you look at uh, what happens when I just blip the, the throttle, I'm not giving it much of a, pers uh, I'm just barely hitting it. Um, you can see when I do that, it immediately goes lean and then goes rich. And this is a common problem that a, a lot of people experience. And, and that's what we're going to go over uh, next.